Hey, so, my name's Elliot, and I've been working on a unified interactive water system plugin for Unreal Engine, and I thought I would make a nice overview video. I'll go into some detail on everything you can do with the plugin, everything it supports, um, how to use it all, I uh, want to cover some of the reasoning behind the design choices I've made, and all in all, try and try and show you a bit of what I've been working on. I'm really happy with the results. I'm really proud of uh, of how usable it is. Um, super designer friendly. Really easy to add to any project, and will hopefully be releasing on the marketplace really soon. I'm just uh, going through the sort of paperwork, I guess. That's where I'm up to. Everything's pretty ready for 1.0. Um, there's some features that I definitely have in mind for future versions, but this iteration is very user-friendly, has really nice quality water, in my opinion, has a great uh, automatic particle system, and supports interaction from everything. So let's jump right into the overview. Um, so first up, obviously, you can see we've got nice displacement-based ripples. Um, these ripples are pretty much the same kind of ripples that you can make using the content examples for render targets, but the, the goal for this project was to basically have a unified interactive water system, hence the name, um, where you can have a water body as big as you like, it automatically interacts, you don't have to do any manual interaction, you don't even have to write any code or blueprints if you want to get this up and running, it'll just work. And it also, of course, does interactive caustics. So you can see that at the moment it's um, reflecting light up from the from the surface of the, the water, and also when I run through and cause ripples, you can see that those are interacting as well. Got some fringing effects going on there, I think just adds a bit of realism. now. Uh, obviously, I'm not simulating physically accurate caustic reflections and refractions. Um, I'm not magic, but I think it's a it's a really good approximation, and it looks really nice and adds a lot of life to the world and lets you really interact with everything, um, and helps the player character really get embedded in that world. Um, you can tweak all of the settings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I'll cover that a little bit later. You can see that there's some options for manually rippling the water, manually spawning splashes, or applying point damage is also handled automatically. Um, so those are just exposed to Blueprint and C++ if you want to do that yourself. But as I said, um, you actually don't need to do any setup, and it will just interact. Um, something else really cool is that particle effects can interact and now this is all automatic interaction there's no blueprint no code going on here um, and you can see that the particles are spawning or well creating ripples dynamically um, I've got this box spawner and you can see these splashes also create their own ripples so it's a really nice unified system that I'm very happy with um, and of course, also just an example of the point damage system. Um, I've got my little robot buddy here. He was just invisible, and he can shoot the ground, shoot the water. Um, and you might have just noticed that the ripples also affect world position offset of my foliage. So there are a few material functions for you to use. Um, there's one which is for the caustics, and that also includes an output for world position offset. So you can just add that material function to any of your existing materials and it'll it'll all hook up nicely. You can also see that when I'm running along I'm sort of spawning some footsteps. These are spawned manually by my character blueprint so if I disable those you can see that it's uh, just interacting automatically with the ripples and also collision based splashes do get spawned but the actual footstep ones I'm spawning splashes uh, manually via blueprint just to 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 not pull your leg there um, I guess that's kind of a pun isn't it something else really important to me as 
the developer of this plugin and I guess as a user of it, I wanted to make sure that you could always just drag a water body in and not have to think about any of the code side of things. Um, so of course there's the, the infinite size, no size restriction, and you can have multiple bodies. Oh, that's embarrassing. Let me just, let me just get back up here. Um, so you can have multiple bodies and they all just go in the level together and there's, there's no worries about it. And they're all interactive. Um, you can see here we've got this turret from Paragon. Most of these assets are from Paragon. The trees and plants are from a pack. But um, the the concrete structures and stuff, or concrete blocks are all Paragon assets, which I've just quickly added my material function to for caustics. And yeah, so you can have multiple bodies. They can all be big. They can all interact together at the same time. Um, and yeah. I'm really happy with it. I think it looks super pretty. And I will go on to show you a little bit more in depth what's happening. All we need to do, once you've got the plugin in your level, drag a water body into the level, make sure it's intersecting a little bit, and that's literally all there is to it. How freaking cool is that? So we can, uh, let's just get this up a little bit so we can see more of those caustics. Um, you can see that the underwater caustics are there and the above water ones. And here are some settings that we've got. So we can choose whether we want to interact on damage. If we disable that, um, you might have your own damage implementation. Then it just won't um, do any interactions based on the Unreal Engine damage system. You can limit the tick rate if you want, if you are targeting uh, weaker CPUs. I found really that this doesn't have much effect on the high-end PCs anyway, um, but it's an option if you want it. You can limit it to anything you want. Um, and damage scale is here so that I could implement um, a universal damage system. So damage scale, basically if your maximum damage in your game is 100, you can leave this at 100. But if your maximum damage is 1,000, set this to 1,000. And then that way a weaker gun in your game will cause a small, the smallest size splash. And the heaviest gun in your game will cause the biggest size splash. Um, now, of course, with your own implementation, you can do whatever you like. But this is just so that I could create a damage interaction system that works out of the box for most people. Um, so yeah, feel free to tweak all of that stuff. If you need to disable it, do your own implementation, whatever you like, but it's there if you want it. Um, water body settings, these are all really straightforward. Create your own water color, that, whatever you want. You can get some really, really nice results. I think let's do a, let's do a bit of a pink water here. I think this looks nice. Um, you can also see that it gets, it's doing a depth transition here. So um, with this depth transition distance, we can change how far it transitions from fully opaque to translucent. Um, this depth transition distance doesn't affect the actual depth of the caustics or anything. It's purely for, um, it's purely for just that material. Um, so we can see that there is actually a volume here as well. Um, you can use this if you need to do swimmable bodies. I will probably extend it for a later version. Um, I'd like to add some basic underwater physics or at least a, uh, um, a good setup for that so that it's easy to implement. Um, I'm sure you can implement it with my current setup, but I just haven't done anything specifically to account for it other than make the volume available. Um, this volume is actually also being used for an underwater post-process effect. So when you go under a red body of water, the screen will go red. Um, and it does some depth of field stuff as well. You can see uh, further away. And yeah, so everything just works together. It's all completely unified. And so as, as we saw, we've just dragged this body in and I can even grab my little dude who's over here now and jump in and run around. Um, so I think I've made it through um, the whole overview of this body. There's just, there's one other section um, and you're fine to enable particles on damage and enable particles on collision and that that's very self-explanatory. If you 
want to do your own particle collision um, system or you have done your own particle collisions um, and you don't want the damage system automatically spawning particles for you, you can disable those and you can also override particle settings if you like. Um, so you can override the interaction which is the, the collision splashes and the damage effect. Um, I'll probably extend this for some much more in-depth support and customization later on. There's one other thing that I want to show you. Uh, there's probably a couple more things, but if we come up to our outliner, we can see this UIWS manager. You never have to spawn this, you never have to worry about it, you never have to think about it. This is just spawned for you by um, the water body system. And this just has some customization features for you if you want to use those. Um, we've got continuous light update. So if you want to have a time of day system, um, we can actually, let me just, I can actually show you that in real time. Let me go light source. So the caustics are affected by the directional light of your level. So they get brighter or, or dimmer based on how bright that is. Um, they're clamped so they won't go unreasonably high, but it's nice for for dimmer scenes that they just automatically scale with the, with the light source. Um, and light direction actually comes into play as well. Um, so if I go and give this a rotate, it, it, um, it's pretty, it's a pretty subtle effect, but it just, um, you can see, you can see the caustic lip moving around there with the, with the light direction. Um, so just, just to, to show you that that, that is all, all sweet. I'll get the manager back and, um, you can see by default it senders the sim on the pawn, but if you disable this, it'll center it on the camera, um, and it'll also fall back on the camera if the pawn doesn't exist. So in the example that the player is dead, or if you're not um, not using Unreal Engine's pawn class, you can center it just on the camera, um, and that should be all fine. Um, now this is an advanced setting that you don't need to worry about. If you have any weird post-process issues going on, this is just so you can debug those. Um, this shouldn't interfere with any of your post-process settings, but I would just hate to release this and then have someone's post-process break. This is just so that you can fade into um, the half-half screen depth transition really nicely. Um, but yeah, there's nothing you need to worry about that. So I would recommend ignoring that setting. Um, I've also got some parameters for the water here. I've got the wind speed, um, so I've got some gusts of wind that sort of come across the come across the lake, um, and I've also got a turbulence variable. Now this is just hooked up to what my water material. Um, you can have these in your water material settings if you like. You don't have to use them um, if you extend it, but I think um, just having those per level is very convenient. I'm going to extend um, the wind thing. I'm thinking of doing either a full new plugin for unified wind or um, at the very least extending the wind settings further um, for just this material that comes with the plugin but of course you can you can extend that as much as you like as well um, and there's also a caustics brightness multiplier so by default caustics are pretty bright in a level and it obviously this is all going to depend so as as well as being affected by the brightness of your directional light um, you have this multiplier as well. So we can go real insane with those if you want to and um, get some interesting effects. You can really see the, the interactive caustics going on there under the water, which is really cool. Um, obviously, this is incredibly unrealistic, but I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe you just really like caustics and want to see them like this. Um, so yeah, that's an option. And I think that takes us to the end of the manager overview. Um, let me just fix my eyes. Um, and I'm just going to quickly show you that you can really easily blueprint uh, the water bodies to extend them if you need to. So we're going to go create a blueprint class and we're going to create this from the water body. Um, BP 
And so, inside this blueprint, um, the main things that you will need to know about, or want to use in this blueprint, I should say. Of course, you can you can customize the water here. So if you want to have a preset water, um, we'll make a purple one. Um, of course, you can preview it in the that graph, graph, uh, etc. Um, there's a bug at the moment where that will have just respawned at zero 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 when it's a blue printed one, but never fear, I'm gonna fix that bug. <laughs> so yeah, we can we can give it we can customize the settings like that. So if you want to have a preset type of lake or, or an acid pond in a level, you can just like have your your acid pond preset ready to go. But also I've got some blueprint native events um, in the UIWS category, which uh, let's 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 have a look. Um, here we go. So we've got apply force at location, point damage splash, radial damage splash, um, request priority manual, and splash at location. So these are functions that you can call and there are these events so when a force is applied at a location you can get um, this event and then you can just react to it um, there's also ones for point damage and splashes so if you're wanting to implement audio you can use these if you're just using my inbuilt collision and interaction handling um, and you've got all the information there that you could need. I'm just forwarding all the stuff that my system uses out to you. Um, and as you saw before, there's some functions that you can call as well. So just if you want to do any of these things manually, um, the options here for you. Uh, so if you don't want to use default Unreal Engine damage system, um, or if you just want to spawn some manual splashes, uh, you can use it like that. Um, and I think there was a manual ripple apply force at location. So this um, is for creating ripples and if you want it to spawn a particle effect you can as well um, and that's just taken from the strength and size. So yeah there's a lot of options if you want a blueprint of course you can just do it in C++ as well if you like and yeah you've got full control and I will um, hopefully extend everything further forever um, because I love it and I think every game on the planet should have really good water. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for thanks for watching. I will do probably like a proper start to finish tutorial when I release it and I'll probably do a nice trailer video when I when I release the, the product as well. Um, keep an eye out. I'll probably post a link to Twitter where you can download just the demo project and you can run around in the water in a packaged game at some point really soon. I can't see a reason why I won't do that sooner um, than releasing the full thing. Um, but yeah, have a play with it. See see how it performs. Um, as I said earlier, I think performance is pretty good. There's still a lot more that I want to do with the project. But yeah, thanks for watching. I hope, I hope you're excited about water, because I am. I love water. Every game. Okay, I'm going to stop going about water. Bye.